be here. Um, my name is Zion Vicent. I'm part of the marketing team. Um, I'm going to be introducing our <laughs> introducing our speakers today. I'm very excited. If you're in this session, you're in the seven principles to live for a healthy life and fulfilled life at home and at work. So the first speaker that we have is Alice Edgerton. Alice is the founder and CEO of ThrivingWithAlice.com. It is where she provides recipes, free training, and advice in areas of overall good health and nutrition. She also offers one-on-one -on -one coaching to those women who are serious about putting a plan together to help them look and feel their best. She has helped women in 10 different states have success in putting a plan in place and incorporating a healthy lifestyle where they lose weight and have a better life for themselves and for their family. She has spoken on stage in New York City addressing how important self-care is and how to make a morning routine a habit. She has been on a talk show in California addressing the success of lowering a client's blood pressure without medication. Her passion and goal is to help mature women live the healthiest, happiest, and most prosperous life they can. We also have Carol Clark with us today. Carol is a five-time number one best-selling author and zero entrepreneur who is passionate about helping physicians move women build successful businesses while enjoying their personal journey along the way. She is formally trained as a master's prepared registered nurse. Prior to her private consulting career, Carol dedicated nearly 20 years building successful programs in the hospitals and physician practices in areas around women's health, surgery, and weight loss. Carol has also a passion for helping professionals become best-selling authors. In her spare time, you'll find Carol enjoying time with her family, husband and four kids, and friends, along with various fitness activities. So, today, we're very excited to have them with us. They also are giving away five of their books today in a raffle. So here in the middle, you'll be able to place your name, and they'll be able to raffle it off to win five of their books for free. It's pretty awesome. So, without further ado, I'll let them take the stage. Why don't we give them a round of applause as they come up. Yay! Thank you, Zion, and thank you, Langley Federal Credit Union, for inviting us here today. We're excited, lots of energy in the room. Yes. And you men and people under the age of 50, don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid. What we're going to be talking about today actually is applicable to no matter what age you are, no matter what gender you are. It's those principles that you can live by to have a, a happy and fulfilled life at home and work. Who thinks that's possible? Yay! Who's living that today? Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we've got our work cut out for us today, but we're going to share some things that if you actually take the time to implement these, it will make a significant difference in your life. And the truth of the matter is that, uh, you know, how you do work is oftentimes how you do home. So if your work life is real frenzied and kind of, you know, really totally frenzied, a lot of times your home life is a bit frenzied as well. So we're going to share some things that can work at both places. Really, our goal for today is to help you with tangible strategies that when you walk out of the room, you can implement immediately. And actually, like it or not, your life has been determined today by what your decisions have been in the past and by what your behaviors have been in the past. So that all creates where you are today. So if you take a look at the decisions you make from today forward and the behaviors that you have from today forward, you will change your life in the short term and definitely in the long term. So if you've got changes you want to make, we're going to give you some strategies to really make that happen. There's actually been an increased focus on creating a healthy, li healthy life at work and home. I mean, look where we are today. You guys are having an entire day. It's so awesome that you can spend on yourselves. It's one of those things that some institutions are taking part in. Some are kind of just saying that they are. They're offering different things, but really, there has been an increased focus on that. However, a lot of times you still see the following, you know, things like having um, some, I used to stand behind here, I'm used to being more mobile, if you don't mind. <laughs> but, um, you know, people still are feeling really overwhelmed at working at home. We're doing so much, so much nowadays for everybody else. There's a lot of negativity. Some workforces are a little bit more, uh, 
have more of a toxic environment, so to speak. Even within a large organization, as you know, there can be small pockets where there's a little bit more of a toxic um, atmosphere. Passive aggressive behavior, poor communication, or maybe no communication at all. It might be in your workplace or maybe even at home. And also recurring illnesses, you see that as a symptom for people who aren't really feeling fulfilled. And also poor motivation, lack of confidence, anxiety, depression, despair. All those sorts of things really are the negative results of a toxic work environment or people who just really aren't living the life that they desire. And the fact of the matter is you're not alone. Even though all these programs are out there, about 60% of the people in large organizations decide not to participate. So you're really not alone in terms of what's going on out there. In addition, did you know that about 50% of the Americans today report that they are workaholics? And that can be a symptom of underlying issues, meaning that you're not really feeling fulfilled, fulfilled in other areas. You can actually be feeling uh, like a workaholic for a number of reasons. One may be, maybe your boss or your supervisor gives you way more than what you need to be handling or more than what's involved in your job description. Maybe you're somebody kind of like me who likes so many different things, you create overwhelm for yourself. And the other thing is then that can lead into really being more of a workaholic where you're spending all your time, you really can't decide or differentiate between work and your home life and really developing that balance. So a lot of times it's not just a life balance, it's actually a matter of creating boundaries for yourself. So we're gonna get into a little bit of that, but you're not alone. And a little story about Alice and I, you may wonder like after you've heard our bios, um, how we came to be, but Alice and I are actually both passionate about helping people improve their lives and we do it in very different ways. But about a year and a half ago, we were actually at a networking event. I know we all go to networking events or uh, maybe we drag ourselves there. But we were there, we kind of rudely separated from the group because we were talking about what we were passionate about. And I spent a lot of time helping you know, people with losing weight and also I consult with physicians. And I, I was tired of seeing how many people were out there really going through the motions, but they're really not excited about what they're doing and they're really not enjoying it. And every day goes by and hours turn into days, turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years of really not really feeling satisfied. So I talked about that and she shared a bit about um, her coaching with women and helping people uh, improve their life and uh, Fulfilled After 50 was kind of born. And now we do it daily for women uh, primarily over the age of 50, but the principles apply everywhere. I actually use it when I'm coaching physicians too. So that's a little bit about how we met. Yes, so, a little bit. so I'm Alice, and thank you, Zion, for that awesome introduction. So I'm still going to give you a little bit of that story. So Zion gave a little bit of the front story. So for me, I am pro by profession a registered dental hygienist of 33 years. I have been married for 18 years and I have two grown children, but we have four children between us, so four grown children. And uh, Carol and I, we are also podcasters, we do that, we lead live women's retreats, uh, we've written a book. So how did that all come about? Is Carol and I came together to create Fulfilled After 50 because we saw there was a real need for the season of life for women. Now for you men in here, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of story of how I ended up here. Because I tell my kids all the time, you can go to college, you can get that degree, you can be in corporate America, or you can do your thing, but that may not be the end result of where God wants you to be. So for me, you know, dental hygiene was an, it's an amazing career. It was an amazing field for me, but there was still something in me that I knew that was not being fulfilled. And I want to tell you guys, like six years ago, I would have never been able to be up here and talk to you guys. So what happened was a series of events that happened six years ago for me. Six years ago for me, my last child left for college. And I know for young, some of you young parents, like this season of life, it's crazy, it gets busy, you start to neglect yourself. 
But when you pour your whole self into raising your kids, you want to be the best mom, the best wife, you want to be there for everything, sometimes you deal with the mom guilt. And then, I am not kidding, your mom tells you, like, this is a short time of life. Guys, it is. It is a short time of life. Did not realize it until I woke up and my last child was gone. When that happened, I lost my purpose because my purpose was gone. And so then I had to ask myself, I was a person before I was a mom, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, God didn't make me just all magically just having babies. So who was that person? And so in my depths of depression and loneliness, and this is one of those things that Carol and I are just really just called to go fulfill, and it is not gender related, it is not age related, because loneliness affects a good majority of people. Probably 70% of the population will experience some loneliness in their life. There is a difference in loneliness and being alone. You can be alone with yourself and it's good. It's good to want to be alone with yourself because then you get to discover yourself more. But loneliness is in those depths of where you don't know what your purpose is. Why did God put you here? Who are you here to make a difference in? And so I'm just going to tell you a short story in the midst of all of that. My husband is a custom home builder. So in the midst of me going through my depression, my loneliness, and then with stress, it brought on uh, menopause for me, which is sometimes stress creates different things for different people. And so it was one Saturday morning, my husband, he got up to go check on a job site. And we have a little pit bull, and her name is Roxy. And Roxy goes everywhere with my husband. And uh, it was my son, actually, that rescued this dog from the SPCA. And she has been a godsend to our family. So one Saturday morning, my husband, he got up, he went, and he just did his regular daily routine. He walked out the door, and this is so important for each and every single male in this room to hear this, is when he walked out of that house, Something was not quite right. So he got down the road, and for anybody who's living in the area, we live in Yorktown, and he pulled out of our driveway, and he was going down the road, and Roxy is a happy little doggy that always has her head out the window and her tail just wagging away. It was different today. It was different because she waved her head right on his console the whole way. And then he got to Fort Eustis Boulevard, and he looked at her. And she made eye contact, had eye contact with him and never took her eyes off of him. He felt a tightness in his chest. And he thought, oh, you know, it's just an ingestion. And then he felt a pain radiating down his shoulder. Oh, I just slept on it wrong. And then that dog, looked at him, never took her eyes off of him, and he said, something's wrong with me, isn't it? He turned that truck around, he dropped the dog off at the house. Didn't come get me. <laughs> I was in the shower, but he didn't want to bother me. He dropped the dog off, and she came and found me in the shower. And she waited there until I got out because she knew that I knew that she wasn't supposed to be coming. And so I called him up and I said, did Roxy get sick in the truck? Is that why she's here? He says, no, I'm walking into the emergency room. I'm having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So this is so important for one to pay attention to your body. Don't ignore the signs, because our emergency room doctor, he had a house going up in Tilano. If he went there, it would have been a different scenario for our whole family. 
It was in his widow maker. He had a stamp for that. So this is part of Carol and I's purpose is, well, for one, to help you learn how to live the healthiest, happiest, most fulfilled life that you can live, and to give you the tools to help you with that. So, you know, we talk about well-being, and Carol and I talk about well-being and wellness in the workplace and corporations, but well-being today, it's not really all about being fit. It's not all about not being sick. Well-being is your total makeup of your body, and it starts with the inside. And guys, you know, fulfillment is the most amazing feeling. It is unfortunate a lot of people do not experience it. So we're going to give you seven tools right now. I hope you guys have something to write down with because this is, this is just something, you know, our goal really for today also is someone can get up in here and speak to you all day long, but if you do not have a tool in your back pocket to go put into effect today, all of this is a waste of time. So we want to give you seven tools that are going to help you right now. And the first one is... Come to peace with the way things are. And what do I mean by that? How many people here in this room, you hear people say all the time, if I had more money, I would. If I had more time, I would. So what happens with that I would is you are forgetting how to come to peace with what you have in your life right now. Guys, every day is a gift. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. We are not guaranteed our next steps when we leave this building. Come to peace with what you have now. And the second, that rolls into the second tip is your, you know, we have a morning routine we'll get into later, but it is daily gratitude. When I get up in the morning, it is thanking God for three things I have in my life right now. I think we do not do enough of that. It is our daily gratitude in life. Your third thing to do is take those time outs in life. How many of you just sit back and hit that pause button? I think we forget to do that when our lives are so busy and it's so chaotic. We need to hit that pause button in our lives and appreciate your family and the friends that you have around you. The fourth thing is, this is so critical and I've had to learn this along the way and Carol talks about this too, is remove those toxic people in your life. They do not contribute anything in your life. They just make you more miserable. They can make you so miserable and so unhappy, you get stuck in that place that you don't want to be. Guys, I can promise you, quality over quantity is so much better. And why does it take us so long to realize that? Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we have had to do that a lot, especially in this road to entrepreneurship, honestly. It's that it's if you are not surrounded by people that lift you up, inspire you, encourage you, what are they providing you? So the fifth thing is eliminate your self-talk. How many women and men in here have that negative self-talk? I am not good enough, I am not worthy enough, I am not smart enough to do that. That person is better than me. I can never do what they're doing. Guys, if it's been done before, you can do it as well. You know the story of Roger Bannister when he crossed that four-minute mile? It was never done before, and now 100 people have done it. If it's been done before, you can do it too. Always set your intentions that you are good enough, you are good enough. Limit that height of that tape that we play in our head every single day. The sixth thing is come out of your comfort zone. 
Gerald knows I talk about this all day long. And you know why? Because the magic happens when you come out of your little box. If I was just stayed comfortable, and I could have, I could have stayed comfortable in my little operatory, in my little chair, just happy-go-lucky seeing my patients that I've seen for 33 years. But there was something more. And to think that I could ever get up here and give you guys a presentation, I would have never thought that unless I came out of my comfort zone and knew there was a need to tell each and every one of you, you are here for a reason, you are here for a purpose, and you are here to impact somebody else sitting right beside you. The seventh thing is have fun. I think a lot of us forget to have fun and have that belly laughter. You know, quit being so serious and have a little bit of fun in your life. It's like laughter actually is a self-healer. It eliminates so many diseases in your body when you can just laugh during the day. Just find something. If you can't think of something, go YouTube a comedian or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go to workers. Workers, when they are happy, what happens? They make a productive team for you guys. So studies show that even a short-term boost in happiness can lead to greater productivity. Long-term joy has profound effects on engagement and success in the workplace, meaning that motivation and productivity leads to a higher level of employee rates and it reduces your costs. Do you guys believe that? Happier employees like give you a greater retention. Is that not right? Yes. So you can take control and make it happen. And a lot of times we may think I'm just one person, I'm in an environment that doesn't support this, I may do my own thing on my own time. But the fact of the matter is that one person, no matter how large your department is, can make a huge, huge difference. I know I've managed lots of different teams and actually it's the team members that typically have the biggest impact on their coworkers. So think about it, when you come into work in the morning and you've got grumpy Sally or Joe over there, does it not affect the overall impact of the entire team and all of a sudden you were coming in feeling pretty good about the day? And then these conversations start and you're like, oh, I'm back. I'm back in this environment. Oh, why, why, you know, what jobs are open? What can I be looking for? But instead of taking that aspect of it, really, if you start to turn it around, you can actually have that same impact on somebody else. Sometimes you may need to give yourself a little bit of a pep talk before you walk in, you know, saying, they're not gonna bring, bring me down today, but you actually have control over your own behavior, and you can actually make some big changes. So let me share just a couple of examples. Um, I manage a couple of teams, a couple of practices. One of them's um, Center for Weight Loss Success in Newport News, and we also have Center for Hormone Health and Wellness. And we have this small team. Well, there's, you know, about 11 people. And they're awesome. And they're not toxic to each other. But there are days we all come in, and we might not feel our best. And if I come in in a grumpy mood, I can assure you everybody else in the office kind of turns grumpy. They, or they all look at each other like, hmm, I wonder what's going on with Carol today. You know, they're not sure what to do with me. And um, yet if I come in and I feel confident and I feel happy, they tend to be the same way. And so we do little things in the office. And we are very particular about what, how we feed our bodies because we're also promoting it to others. We're careful about fitness. So it's a natural part of our overall culture. And you can impact the culture in your particular organization. You might be the one who comes in. I know Tina, one of our staff, she came in and said, I've got something new for us to try today. I'm like, oh, what is it, you know? And it's just three things. We're all doing this challenge now. It's three things. It's a set of sit-ups, squats, and, um, 
and crunches that we have to do. And of course, I had to add on planks and push-ups because we don't want to ignore that part of our body. But it's really simple. Every morning, we all have this little challenge. It's like doing a certain number of each one of those. We help cover for each other while we all get it done. It helps improve our mood. It helps improve our physical fitness. It helps our team building. And it's just been one of those really great things that brings us together. But it was all started by one person who had an idea, who had some positivity, who wanted to positively impact their team. So you can take control and make it happen, whether you're the supervisor in your area, whether you're the employee, whether you are the CEO or the COO, no matter what it is, you can set an example for others in your life. And when I manage teams in the hospital, you know it was a little bit more difficult, but you can do the same thing. And coming in and making your part to make it positive can actually make a huge difference. And when I consult with physician practices, if you walk in, you can just tell the vibe of the office, you know? You walk into the area, you can just tell the whole vibe. Is it something where they all feel pretty good, and they've got great customer service skills, or is it one of those places where you can tell the drudgery to come to work? and then working together, realizing that you can make a difference more so than what you may imagine. Just like that person who comes in all grumpy, totally wipes out anything good going on in the department, you can do the same thing with the other opposite effect. So I encourage you to take control and make that happen. And as we mentioned earlier, we're about to get into these um, seven habits that you can do. I can guarantee you implement just one of them today, and it'll make a positive impact in your life. And it does apply to everybody, no matter what season of life you're in. So like I mentioned earlier, don't be afraid if you're not over 50 and female, because it really does apply to people in all um, aspects of life. And so there's seven daily actions that we've found and that have been proven true in our existence, and also for the groups that we work with, for the women we coach, for the people that we coach, and it's also scientifically proven. So we're gonna hop into those right now. Yeah, this is just not our pain. It's just not something that we made up. It is Harvard research. There's been so many case studies, and it starts with this one thing, the morning routine. I'd love to know, right here with the show of hands, who in here has a morning routine? That's amazing. That's no, awesome. That's a lot more than I thought. How many and of those who have a morning routine, how many have one that serve, you feel like really serves you yes. well? Yes. Okay. It's more than like having your coffee and brushing your teeth. Right. <laughs> oh, we heard from you. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Uh, yeah, that's really good. So I'm going to give you a little bit of my morning routine, and girls going to give you her morning routine. They are a little bit different, and so for me, my morning routine before I even get out of bed, as soon as my eyes open in the morning. I am saying three to five things that I'm grateful for. Because if you are not grateful in your life, then your life stays empty. You know, we really came to this because it was, it's all about the Kate Spade day as well. You can have all the fame, money, and fortune in your life, but that does not make you happy. And so it's being grateful for what we have. You know, I feel like every morning when I open my eyes, I am so grateful that I am able to see. I am so grateful that I have arms and legs to walk on. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for a family. So that's how I start out my morning routine. And then after that, I am like drinking 16 ounces of water. What water does immediately when you wake up, it tells your body it's time to wake up. It brings all those cells awake and alive, says, okay, I'm ready to think and get this day rolling. So water is a huge part of both of our lives. We cannot stress that enough, how much hydration does for you. After that, then I am going into a form of meditation, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But then after meditation, then I am journaling. And then after I journal, I will go just move my body. If I don't have time to do a workout, I do have a little gym out of my house. So if I don't have time to go do a full body right then, I will do some yoga poses or just some stretching. It's amazing just if you just stretch your body in the morning, it moves that circulation in your body. 
It creates your brain to create your juices flowing so you're able to think clearer. That brain fog is gone, it's lifted. And then I, if I am not intermittent fasting that morning, I will go feed my body something nutritious. And it's usually um, I have a cup of steel cut oats or that sort of thing. And then I, I continue on with my day. But it is so, so critical. I want you guys to raise your hands right now. The first thing you do, who picks up the phone? Zion. Are we all being honest here? Oh, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get an old fashioned alarm clock and sell them at Walmart. Right. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, so what happens when you are immediately reaching for that phone in the morning? What happens? The scroll to the Then you know what happens? You're looking at everybody's highlight reel that they're putting on social media. And then what happens? You start that negative self-talk. And so now you've already started the day in a negative way. I never, ever, ever look at my phone until 9 o'clock in the morning because I am more important than that. It's so important, guys, to feed your soul first right? instead of letting somebody else's life dictate yours. Right? And in light of time, I'm going to go through my morning routine pretty quick. I think we're coming close. Um, but my morning routine is, I'm kind of an actual, I still have children, I still have a couple children at home. I have four kids, one's in grad school, one's at the apprentice school at the shipyard, but he lives at home. I've got one at tech, and then I have a, a senior in high school. So I know there's probably some moms here with young kids, potentially, or others who have other people, uh, kids at home. So your schedule has to be uh, balanced with what's going on in your life. And you can take your morning routine and make it as long as you want, or as short as you want. And the reality is, simple is what gets done. So I follow a couple real simple rules. 5 a.m., our alarm goes off, I hop out of bed. I have to hop out of bed because otherwise I'm, I'll go back to sleep. And once you go back to sleep and you hit the snooze alarm, you're gonna end up hitting the snooze alarm on your day. And you start to go to work feeling kind of a little bit more because I didn't get enough sleep. So it starts with getting to bed at a decent hour. But uh, I get up, brush my teeth, have um, a good eight ounces of water, and then I go downstairs and I do some sort of fitness immediately. Because if I wait till later, it's not gonna happen. I'll come up with some excuse. So I do some sort of fitness, and I can take this whole morning routine, I'm gonna tell you, make it last an hour, or I can make it last 10 minutes, it just depends. So after I get my fitness in, I usually have warm water with some lemon, helps with digestion. So I've already had a couple glasses of water, and then I do sit down and take some time to just be quiet, to read something spiritual, to meditate a little bit if I can, to look at my day <coughs> schedule. And I also set some uh, goals for myself and affirmations so that I'm always telling myself positive things about myself. And then by that time I've cooled down and I can get up and go take my shower and get ready to go. Make sure the kids are up, Everybody, my one son leaves at 4.30 so he's gone before I even get up. And uh, my daughter then makes sure she's up and ready to go to school and then I'm usually at the office by 7.30. So, but my morning has started out with a really positive, energetic way. And I do that uh, not necessarily all on the weekend, but I do try to you know, do it especially during the week. And I do practice um, intermittent fasting like Alice does a lot. Um, and so in the morning, if I'm doing the heavy cardio, it's also a fat metabolizer. And it just feels really, really good. But your morning routine sets you up for a really awesome day, or it can set you up for one where you let everyone else take control. So morning routine is the first one. <laughs> oh, guys, I am so like passionate about our seven steps. Like we're like one night, I know. So meditation, I want to tell you guys, is you know I used to think like it was woo woo. Okay, we have uh, our four kids range from 36 to the youngest is 24. Everybody thinks like woo-woo's meditation until you actually start implementing it. Okay, all meditation is, is a breathing technique. You cannot feel stress in your body when you are concentrating on your breaths. 
What happened is when we are born as babies, our diaphragm, we are breathing from our diaphragm. As we get older, our breathing is more like in our shoulders and it's in our thoracic, so we're not breathing from our diaphragm. And therefore, when you're breathing from your diaphragm, it is scientific research proven that it, re it just reduces stress immediately. It helps your mood, it helps with your emotions, and so I'm just going to do a brief, brief exercise because I know that it works. My kids actually use it. My 26-year-old is a producer at Fox News in Philly. So when breaking news comes, it gets really hectic in there. And I want you to know she practices this and it works, okay? So I just want everybody just to you know, sit up as tall as you can in your chair right now. And I'm just going to keep you through quick, quick exercise because we don't have a lot of time. And so the, the first thing we're going to do is we breathe through our nose with a count of five. And then you're going to exhale it with a count of five. And then you're going to inhale it again for the count of five. And exhale it with a count of five. And inhale it one more time with a count of five. And exhale it with a count of five. Can you feel the stress that leaves your body when you are doing that? It's because you're, you're concentrating on your breathing, so you can't think about anything else. And I encourage you, you know, with our crazy, busy, chaotic lives and, you know, even traffic with that road rage that's going on and just the craziness of our world, if you are encountering a situation during the day, a confrontation, a meeting that may not be going as you had planned, I encourage you maybe just go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom and be proactive instead of reactive. Sometimes when we wait and we back off of those emotions and then come back to it, it gives a totally different result. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. During the day, that, that is helpful. The third thing, the third step is journaling. I want to tell you guys the benefits of journaling. If you've never done it, I hear it all the time. Well, I'm not a writer. I can't journal. Journaling will do nothing for me. Let me tell you one of the things that journaling does. If there's a person in this room right now that says, I can't sleep, that's the best thing for you. Before you go to bed at night, 30 minutes before you go to bed, just turn off all those devices and take a journal and journal. I, went, I brought one today just because it's one of the best ones out there. It's called the most powerful journal on the planet. Does anybody here know who Mel Robbins is? Okay, so Mel Robbins, she has, she's done TED Talks, she's a motivational speaker, she has a talk show in New York City, we went to taping of one of her shows, and she has the rule that's called the five second rule. So if you um, are in a position that maybe you don't want to do something, or you know you need to do something, you don't want to do something, then you're going to count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, and you go, and just do it. Your brain has five seconds to make a decision, and then it diverts. So her journal is a, a great one that it gives you your affirmations. It gives you what you want to do during the day, your projects. It is an amazing journal. Some of us don't know what we are going to journal about. That's why Carol and I have a program actually starting uh, next Monday that's 30 days to journaling because the holidays get really hectic. It gets crazy. Our emotions get crazy. So we are firm believers in journaling. Mm -hmm. Right. Five second rule gets me out of bed every morning at 5 a.m. Five, four, three, two, one, feet on the ground. <laughs> that's what I do too. So journaling is one of those great things. The fourth one, we all know this intellectually, water, you need to get your water and you know your body is 60% water. It's one of those things that affects every organ that you have. The nursery comes out here, but it's your skin, it's your digestion, it gets rid of toxins, 
And it's one of those things that people replace with other things, you know, just getting in a lot of coffee, Gatorade, energy drinks, lots of other stuff. You know, your water is really something that's going to be more effective and it affects every single aspect of your body. It boosts your immune system. Those of us out there with maybe some joint pain or that sort of thing, it also helps with lubrication of your joints, your muscles, your tissues, that sort of thing. Uh, it prevents dehydration, which also can prevent us from overeating, because sometimes we mistake our hunger for thirst. And it also supports, like I say, everything about your whole body. I used to be, I'm on day 12. Anyone here Diet Coke drinkers? Okay. <laughs> Good for you guys. I guess I should say soda. I am on day 12. I, am a, I was a Diet Coke addict, and I'm on day 12 of my program. I'm like on day 12. Yay. I care. This is a huge thing for me. Thank you. You know, I went into the last 90 days. Is the last 90 days of the year started actually 12 days ago. And I want to start the new year feeling better than I ever did. Why wait till the first of the year to, to try something new? So I have been a Diet Coke drinker for as long as I can remember. I've never really drank coffee, really. I only drank that and water. So for me, this is a huge deal. I still get my water in, but Diet Coke has taken, I mean, it just took over my life. It was a total addiction. So I'm proud to say I'm actually on day 12. But I also get my water in pretty easily. You know, we have eight ounces when I get up, eight ounces, uh, or 16 ounces usually after I work out. Then I have another eight ounces while I'm getting ready for work. I drink a bottle on the way to work. And then I have it with my meals. And again, I mean, by the time I'm at work, I'm, by the time I got here, I couldn't wait till I got to the bathroom. Because <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, but I couldn't wait. So once you get into that habit, you actually feel so thirsty when you don't have that water. And you can make it taste so good with lots of different things, whether it's lemon or infusing it with whatever that you want. But water is one of those things that if you're not getting half of your body weight in water, or at least 64 ounces, and by all means, if you're a hardcore athlete or somebody who works out a lot, you need more than that. You need to make sure that you're getting your water, and it's just that important. So I won't belabor it anymore, but anyhow, make sure you're getting your water, and I saw water outside too, so it's really important. And the next thing, we all know this intuitively, but being active, we all know 10,000 steps a day is the recommended uh, amount. Who wears, anybody here wears something where you're tracking your steps each day? It's pretty common nowadays. Sometimes it's amazing to see that you're not at 10,000 steps. When I get home at the end of the day, if I'm not there, I actually walk around, I take a walk, or I do something to get to my 10,000 steps. You also, it's been shown if you have 150 minutes of exercise, which is five days of 30 minutes a, a day, or whatever you're doing, just move more. But if you do that, it actually improves your sleep by 65%. But fitness is so important, it relieves anxiety, it relieves stress, it helps us make better decisions, I think. I'll oftentimes, if I'm thinking about something, I'll just go work out and I, can, I just have a clearer mind. It brings blood flow to your brain and it also is the antidote for all those aches and pains that we get as we get, grow older. I have arthritic pain now from many years of running and um, working out or having motion, motion is a potion. Rest is rest, you know, you wanna make sure that you're continuing to move. So fitness is another one of those things that is super, super important. Um, so if you're not, just think about something you do something you like, otherwise you're not gonna do it. Remember, simple gets done. But getting out there, aiming for 10,000 steps and making sure that you're doing some sort of, of fitness. When my kids were little, I had to go somewhere else to do my fitness, because at home I'd never get it done. Thought I'd be doing laundry and people would be climbing on me and that sort of thing. But now, um, I can do it in the morning at home, which is nice. So you just have to make it fit into your routine. Now, number six, I'm gonna try to hit this really fast because we're running out of time because we got one more after that. But whole foods, okay? So the second part of the story with my husband was he was 50 pounds overweight. And so that saying is, you are what you eat. That, that is a fact. He was going through McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King's, anything that he could find really fast and quick to eat. Okay, what eating whole foods does is, one, it lowers naturally your blood pressure. It really cures type 2 diabetes. It helps prevent cancer. And so when I researched all these foods, and I like just raided our pantry, I threw it all out. I did a ton of research on what foods do what to the body, and we started eating really a different lifestyle. And it, it is not a diet, 
that it's a lifestyle. You have to live it every single day. So for six years, he has kept 50 pounds off because life is more important to him than that cheeseburger through Wendy's or McDonald's. And so when I shop, I shop the outside parameters of the grocery store. I have very, very minimal processed food in my house. We really limit our sugar. And guys, when he was in the emergency room, his blood sugar level was 185. He was pre-diabetic and he now had a heart disease. I want you to know to this day, the only medication he takes, and he is almost 63 years old, is he takes half of a tablet of blood pressure medicine. And that is to keep his blood vessels open. That is what a healthy lifestyle will do for you. I am 55, I take no medications whatsoever, and it all contributes to what you put in your body. And lastly is sleep. I know you probably knew that was coming, but I'd like you to think about real, R-E-E-L, when you think about your sleep. I'll do it real quickly, but the first thing is your routine. Your routine is what do you do at night? Do you go to bed with a lot of just craziness going on, people talking, your TV on, your phone? Your computer sitting there? Have you just binge watched, you know, a bunch of shows? I've got my own little favorites that I have to curtail what I watch. But have you just had everything kind of going? What's your routine to calm yourself down and get yourself to sleep? The next one is uh, your environment, which I just kind of talked about, but making sure that you have an environment that supports that. Do you have a bunch of snoring animals in, uh, your, in your room? I mean, really, like snoring animals, snoring people next to you, you know. <laughs> but your environment is really important. You know, what's your mattress like? Do you replace your mattress or your pillow? Do you have all the electronics around you? Do you leave your TV on? Um, those sorts of things you control, and so it's time to, for all of us to take control of our environment and make it something that's more peaceful for ourselves. You know, a diffuser, you know, if, you, if you're into that sort of thing, soft music, reading before you go to bed, a bath for some people, but your whole routine, your environment, your electronics, keeping those somewhere else. Um, and later on, we're going to be talking about time management and work-life balance there, too, so we're going to get into a little bit more of that. Uh, but electronics, and then the last thing is liquids. What are you eating or drinking before you go to bed? Are you drinking too close to bedtime so you have to get up in the middle of the night? Are you having some alcohol to kind of maybe, you know, relax you a little bit? Alcohol is actually a stimulant. And uh, so it might relax you initially, but it's actually a stimulant. And then also, you know, are you drinking too much caffeine close to bed? So taking a look at your liquids, that's the other thing that you want to look at. If you take this, and you embody it yourself, and you extend it to the team that you work with, you can actually witness an amazing transformation in your own life and in the life of your, uh, at work. We appreciate you guys coming and listening to us today. We hope you know, you're able to take some of this away and use it right now, make a difference in your life, make a difference in somebody else's life. Um, Zion had a handout he was going to pass around. We do have a 30-day program. If any of you guys are interested in that, and just give us your name and email. We'll email you the information. But thank you so much. And we do. We do have some books to give away, too, if anybody can draw those another time. If you want to drop your business card or write your name on there and put it in there, we're going to be giving away five of them. Did you have a question? Oh, yeah, it's the five hours. It's actually melrobbins.com, and I think on her website it has her her five second journal.